Aloha guys. Have you ever gone to the bow shop to get your strings and cables changed? Stoked to have your bow back, only to go shoot it and find out your 70 pound bow now only peaks out at 65 pounds? Or maybe you did the strings and cable yourself and the draw length or the timing or it just doesn't feel the same, something is wrong. I want to help you with that. In this video, I want to show you my method for changing out strings and cables to get it back to the specs and the feel and the poundage and everything that you had before you were to change the string. Make it as simple as possible. If you're a do-it-yourselfer, hopefully it can kind of walk you through the process. But even if you don't do it yourself, maybe there's a little bit of bow mechanics in this video to teach you just a little bit more about bows, strings and cables, and how that all relates and you can learn something from this video. So stay with it and let's get right into it. All right, gang, let's get started. I want to go over some of the tools you're going to need first. Of course, you're going to need the bow. You're going to change the cables and strings on. Um, got the bow press here. Got a bow square. Important tool. If you don't have one, you should get one if you're going to get into this. Tape measure. Uh, the strings and the cable, the new one. Uh, a silver sharpie or a paint pen. And a notepad and a pen uh, for you to take some notes on, uh, on measurements and stuff. So let's get started here. Okay, now some of the measurements you're going to want to get to is the axle to axle brace height knock location. This is uh, in relation to the bow, uh, knock to peep, and some timing tuning marks, and we'll get into that. Okay, now to measure the axle to axle, we're going to measure from the center of the bottom axle here all the way to the center of the top axle up here. Get that measurement. Now I measured that axle to axle, and it's about 33 and 1 16th inch. Okay, now the next thing we're going to measure, we're going to use the bow square for this. It's going to be the brace height. The brace height is from the groove of the, of the grip here to the string. This would be the shortest distance. So you put the bow square in the groove perpendicular to the string. And then, you know, you kind of move it around a little bit and find that shortest distance that you get. And in this case, it's right about seven inches. Okay, so the next two measurements are going to be the knock location. So how high is the knock placed uh, in relation to the bow and the knock to peep location. This is not particularly important for changing out the strings, but it is important for the knock location is how the bow feels. So this is where you're going to be pulling from in relation to the geometry of the bow. If you change this from setup to setup, the bow will just hold a little different and it will feel a little different uh, pressures in your hand as that, uh, as that location is changed. And then the peep location is just so that you can quickly place your peep after you get the new string, you know where it is, so you don't really have to mess around too much. So how I measure the uh, knock location is I'll typically just do it um, from, you can either use the burger hole, so this is where your arrow rest is mounted as a hole. Here, let me see if I can get that here. So, um, see that screw mounting hole? And you can kind of line up your bow square, put it on the string, you know? You can line up your bow square with the center uh, of the, it's hard to see, but the center of the burger hole, something like that, or the top or the bottom, however you want to reference it. In in this case, I'm going to line up the bow square with about the bottom of the burger hole as a reference there. You can just barely see it there. Uh, this looks good. And then you can we can see the knock is about, let's see if I can get that focus, about one, two, three, four, not a half inch it, but maybe uh, seven sixteenths um, from the bottom of the burger hole. So we're going to write that measurement down. Okay, next location is the um, top of the knock to the peep. I always measure things from the top knock set. So where the top edge, um, the top of your knock on the arrow will touch the, the knock set that you set. So that's always my reference point. So from the top of that to the, uh, to the center, let's get that. Top of that to the center of the peep, right about there. And looking at where the center of the peep is, we're looking at about four and a half inches for this, for this setup. So taking a look at the measurements we got so far, we got the axle to axle at 33 and 1 16th inch, brace height 7 inches, knock location is 7 16th from the bottom of the burger hole, and knock to peep is 4.5 from the top knock set. And the last part is the timing marks, so get into that. 
Okay, so for the marks, this is where you're going to use your silver sharpie or a paint pen. Now, if you're really serious into the archery, you're going to realize that one of the greatest things you can do is have your setups be consistent from bow to bow and be able to measure those differences or be able to see changes as they happen. You know, these are these are soft strings and, you know, the, the rest of the bow is rigid, but the string is not and there's going to be changes over time. So what we're going to do with this bow is, um, this is my buddy Riley's bow, it's a single cam bow. But uh, with a single cam, in this case, we're going to make little timing marks on the cam here to make sure that we always have the same cam position. So when we change the strings in the cable, we can adjust that to hit the correct cam position. And also, say we're in the field over time, we'll be able to tell whether something has changed. We'll be able to reference those timing marks and make slight adjustments to bring the bow back into tune. Now, the other thing I didn't talk about was your stock set or your first set, this is where I would suggest people typically tune and play around with their bow. So tune your stock set to how you want it, you know, if you're kind of a tinker or whatever. And then make your marks, get all your measurements, and that's your consistent setting. So um, you can always get back to that. And then when we take off these strings, you're going to store those strings on the side somewhere as like a backup set. And set up your new strings to feel just like the set that you had tuned up uh, before your stock set. So let's get right to that. Okay, so because this is a single cam bow, this is an old Matthews S2. I'm only going to put timing marks on the bottom cam because the top cam is just an idler wheel that can go anywhere. There's nothing to reference it there. So I'm going to put some timing marks here. How we do that, take our silver sharpie, uh, so I put that here, and then I'm just going to reference the side of the limb here and make a line on the cam just like that so i don't know if you can see that you can see that line on the cam and then um say it were to change you know it would kind of get covered up or move in relation to the limb i'll do it on this side just to kind of make it a little more precise so so as you can see we got two timing marks there so we always know the position of the cam and we can hit that uh, consistent cam position all the time. So the case of this string change, this is only a single cam bow, I re reiterate again. So if you have a two cam bow, you're going to want to mark the top and uh, the top and bottom cams because they both can move re relative to each other. And then you can also take your silver sharpie and even mark your screw holes like if you're a bow hunter and kind of rough and tumble and things move around you can mark your, your screw holes the position of your rest and things like that so if something moves you can quickly just kind of reference those marks and then you'll know whether um whether something happened and you need to fix it all right now i'm ready to put the bow in the press but before i go there i want to talk about one more thing that i didn't do because i don't have it with me if you got a bow square a uh, bow scale you could measure the draw weight of the bow but those measurements that we took in the beginning the axle to axle the brace height and the cam timing marks if when you change your cable and your string, you hit all those measurements, I can guarantee you that the bow weight will be the same. Now, of course, pending you didn't do something dumb with your limbs in the press, but that's pretty much going to get you your, your bow weight. So I'm not going to do that for this video. This is a 70 pound bow. Um, well, Riley's kind of backed it out a little bit, but uh, we hit all our marks. We'll be consistent and back on track. So let's get to the bow press. Okay, we're in the press and we're ready to start ripping off some strings and cables. But before we touch any of that, I want to take a brief moment to stop and talk about some common sense. Now, when we change things on a bow, it's very important that we put it back the same way. So if you're somebody that might forget when you take something off where the cable runs in relation to the cable guard or what string tracks the strings go into, now's a great time to take out your cell phone or something and snap photos of where what goes where. Now I've done this a lot of times, so it's not a big deal, but I cannot tell you how many times with my friends' bows, they go to the pro shop or wherever, and they come back and there's like, I can totally see that the cable is in the wrong track uh, with respect to the cable guard, and really simple things like that, and of course the obvious one, which is not, not making bow weight or maybe overweight. So definitely, um, you can take that time to take a common sense step to make some photographs or uh, take a mental photograph of where things are so you don't screw it up. The next thing is on the strings. You definitely want to get a set of quality strings. In this case, and I'm not sponsored or anything by any string people, but in this case, uh, for this video, these are 60X custom strings Riley bought, so hopefully the lengths are right. The lengths are not going to be perfect always, you know, they, people's string jigs and peg diameters are very different when they make the string. 
So when you put them on, they may not be perfect. They may require a little bit of twist in or out here and there. And with the strings, you can twist them here and there a little bit. Right? You don't want to go excessive on it because that'll start causing peep rotations and things like that. But you're going to have to adjust that. Now, if I rip off both the cables and the string and the timing is off and you're kind of a beginner at this, how are you going to know which one to change? Do you need to shorten the string or do you need to lengthen the cable or shorten the cable? How are you going to know? So if you take some common sense about this and think about it, the easiest way to do this would be to take one piece off at a time, replace it with the new one, let it out, and then try to hit your timing marks on your cam and your measurements and all of that, one by one. This is, the, to me, the simplest foolproof way to get your bow back the same way so you don't screw it up. So if you had like, I shoot a lot of Hoyts where you got two cables and a string, you replace one cable at a time, hit your marks, good. Then do the next cable, hit your marks, good. Then do the string, hit your marks, good. I typically like to start with the cable because the cable is the most sensitive to me um, as far as getting the length right and being able to get that bow back to where it was. If you don't have that right, then the cable's off and just really, you're, gonna, you're just gonna have to work with things a little more complicated at that point or have to get the right length cable and um, diameters have a little bit to do it, but that's getting into the weeds. So, how we're gonna start here, I'm gonna take off the, this, it's a single cam bow, old Matthew, so it's only got a, one long string and one uh, bus cable system. So I'm gonna take off the bus cable first, let, put the new one on, let it out, hit my marks, and then do the string. So let's get to do that. Okay, gang, now a key thing if you want to save some time, I took the old bus cable off. The loops, while you're taking them off, make sure you don't lose twists in the loop. So hold on to them, take them off in the same position they are. And what you can do is you can bind these loops together and keep them together so that you don't lose any length or any changes in the uh, bus yoke system. So, say you were to screw something up here, you can always go back to the old one. It's the same length, everything's the same, just put them back on. So uh, keep those loops together and, and take care of that. So we've got the new cable here um, They were bound together out of the package with a paper clip So what we'll do is we'll use that paper clip for the old cable put it back in the package as a spare But uh, kept the loops on this one on the new one I'm gonna go put them on now They can be a little bit kinked up because they're brand new and you know um, Some of these good string makers they make their servings pretty tight so it can be pretty stiff But uh, just work with it work them on there and now that we only took and taken the cable off it should be easy it should be less likely for us to screw up putting it back in the same place because there's only a few places to go right the same track for the for the for the cable guard the same track in the bottom cam and of course the yoke up top so let's go put it on okay key thing now before you let anything uh, off the bow make sure all the cables and tracks are all lined up for the strings and the cables because if you get them in the wrong place and you let out the bow, you could crunch something or totally uh, skip a cable or something like that and, and uh, cause some damage or, hurt, or worse yet, hurt yourself. So, got that. Oh, see, gotta be careful. Check all the tracks. We're all in the cam tracks here. All in the cam tracks here. Yep, I'm keeping tension on the string so when we let it out, it all stays the same. All right, so we got the bow out of the press. The only thing that's been changed is the bus cable. This is the original string, nothing has been touched there. And the first thing we're gonna check, everything's taken out and good, we're gonna check that timing mark. Remember those timing marks we made on the cam? So I don't know if you guys can see it on this video, but you can see this silver Sharpie, that timing mark, it's a little bit lower than the edge of the limb, and the top one is hidden in there. So this cam is a bit rotated this way, so that means if I tug on that cable, essentially simulating shortening it, you can see how that mark grows, this mark over here, grows a bit further from the limb. So that's the wrong direction we wanna go. So that means this cable is a little bit shorter than the stock, than the original cable that we had on there. We can adjust this by, um, by taking a few twists out of the cable. And this is pretty close, so that, that'll be real easy to do. Um, also, the other thing, is this is a, 
uh, bus uh, yoke system to the limbs so before I do any of that uh, probably want to balance the cam out there'll be a little bit of lean here and there because these yokes are probably made on an even even jig and you know the bow is not even because the cable guard offsets the cable in one direction so you have to adjust I would say adjust this first for the lean of the top cam or in this case the idler wheel and then we'll go ahead and um, adjust for the timing mark here all right, so the top idler lean, try to address that. So you have a split yoke here. Um, you can adjust the lengths of this individually to change how the cam leans. So when I first took it off, it looked to me that the cam was leaning a little bit bottom this way, uh, this side. So basically you have two choices. You can either lengthen this side or you can shorten this side to bring the bottom of the cam this way and make the cam uh, stand more straight up now every bow is going to tune a little bit different it depends how you grip it they manufacture it slightly different nothing is going to be identically the same so you know this doesn't always have to be perfect up and down but before we started if you want to take maybe a mental picture or a mental note of what that lean kind of looks like some people like to lay an arrow on the side and reference that or whatever but I had an idea it looked like it was pretty much straight up for uh, how Riley had it set up um, and maybe with a slight lean that way so we're about there and then um, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a few twists out of the cable to hit the timing mark on the cam that we made okay so I took one twist out of the cable out of the cable and we can see our mark is a little bit closer to the limb I can begin to see the that top mark here so we'll take another twist out and it should be right on. All right, so I took another twist out of the cable and we're way closer to our marks. So hopefully you can see this bottom mark is showing up right by the limb. And we can begin to see the top mark a whole lot better there. It's not exactly perfect. It might still be just, the cable might still be just a half, a half twist touch short. But I'm gonna leave it there because you know these things as you shoot them and draw them, they're gonna settle a little bit, typically settle a little longer. So I'm gonna leave it there and then go ahead and touch the string. I wanted to make another note about uh, your replacement strings and cable. If you get a set that have a, has a different diameter of serving along the cable, you know, the thicker you get, it could effectively act as like it being a little shorter. So you may have to take more twists out to get to the same spot. And if you get a thinner string, you know, vice versa, the opposite way. So um, just wanted to make that note. It's kind of getting in the weeds for, for the purpose of this video. I want to keep it basic, but, um, yeah, so I changed the cable first and the whole reason for that is this ca the cable is what most significantly affects your draw weight and all of those things and the cable length typically is shorter than your string so you have less room to play around here on length so I typically like to adjust this first make sure this is good before I touch the string because I do have a little more leeway on the string or it's been my experience that I do so and if you don't get the right cable length and it's all you can't make it work uh, within reasonable amount of twists up and down say I don't know four twists or whatever it just depends like you know how long your cable is and how much twist they kind of set in it when they sent it to you so you know there's variations there but um you got to use some common sense there and some reason but anyway if, if you can't make it work then you probably uh, unless you find shooting the bow in a different way you're probably gonna have to go back and get the right length of cable there before you proceed all right cable's done let's do the string all right so we got the string on the cam uh, on the bow the new string and uh, I can kind of see show it here you can see the timing mark there it's a bit short so um, well how you can kind of tell a little bit is if you want to see you know what the cable does if you were to shorten the cable you can kind of tug on the cable a little bit you can see it moves the marks down so you could shorten the cable if you want to hit marks uh, in this case if I shorten this cable though it increased the, the the poundage of the bow and increased the brace height and getting too complicated here but we only changed the string so I hit the marks with the cable first I changed the string and now I'm off the mark so if I want to get back to where it was I should probably make the adjustments in the string in this case if I shorten the string it looks like the mark goes further away from where it should be so I'm gonna lengthen the string by taking twists out now these single cam Matthew strings are so long that um, they historically can be pretty more susceptible to stretching and all those things and it does give you more leeway to adjust the length and I can tell um it feels a little bit twisted up uh, kind of hard here so um, I'm gonna take some twists out see if I hit that mark and uh, see where we go from there okay so I took a few twists out of the string and uh, it moved the marks a bit closer I have them spot on right now but I gotta be 100% honest with you even with about three twists out it still wouldn't uh, hit the mark it was just a little short so I made up for it 
simply by putting a half or one twist back into the cable to pull the marks in so if I look um, show you guys a little closer here um, you can see the mark there it's right on and the mark on the knee it's right on so we're pretty much spot on it's um, getting a little more specific I expect this very long uh, older technology <laughs> single cam Matthew string I mean the materials are better today but I still do expect some settling on the string to occur so it'll probably lengthen out a little bit and when that uh, when that lengthens out it'll probably pull the cam uh, this way a little bit so you can um, take it out put a few twists in so we're just gonna um, put in his knock set put in his peep have him shoot it a little bit and then uh, and then go from there you know make little adjustments but now that we got the marks and we got the measurements I want to check the measurements axle to axle we're right just a smidgen short of 33 and 16 just because I had to put that uh, that twist in the cable that will shorten the axle to axle so slightly it's um, pretty much negligible in this case and then um, the brace height we're right at 7 inches so um, good to go pretty much set back and uh, he won't have loss of poundage or uh, any variations like that or, or in draw length or anything so just gotta go shoot it a little bit now and let it settle in okay wrapping up here remember what I said about his original uh, stock set of strings so I took the paper clip that came with the stock set I ran them through all the loops there so none of the twists are gonna come out of his stock set uh, still got his his peep in this one but we'll take the peep out put it in, in his new set but uh, what you do is take the baggie from the old one put this in the baggie and you have a spare set no matter where you go you can put this on pretty quickly with a bow press and have your bow back to where you had it tuned and and, and and good to go so keep it as a spare also keep it as a um, kind of as a standard so if you screw up doing another new set or something like that you have a standard to, to reference back to and even on your lengths um, say you know you lose the specs or you can't find it one day well you've got a working set right here to give to a string maker to figure that out so there you go so that's the video thanks for watching hopefully you learned a little bit about bow mechanics and stuff and maybe you can walk yourself through changing out your own strings and cables I also want to say this video is not to rag on any bow shops or pro shops maybe not getting it right you know in their defense um, high volume shops and stores they only have a limited amount of time uh, to help one customer so they're gonna try to do their best and you know sometimes things are missed so maybe this video can kind of teach you just a little bit about that and you know how to maybe fix some of that yourself or at least you know maybe where the problems lie um, if you're in the Hawaii area too uh, I'm currently trying to build uh, build up one of my build up a house for myself and maybe down the road I can offer some kind of more advanced level tuning and and both set up and stuff like that Sp just spend a little more time with uh, with you guys that want to get better uh, with the tuning or with the shooting or maybe with the bow that maybe a typical shop uh, couldn't give you that much time so anyway hopefully this video was again useful uh, thanks for watching if you guys want to see anything else you can leave them in the comments below and um give me a subscribe whatever just to help out the channel just trying to build it here all right catch you guys in the next one aloha take care bye bye